And of course, Terry was central to the key moments in the riding career of Jim Cullity. Jim, of course, the man who rode best mate to those three Gold Cup wins. And he joins us now on the phone. Sad circumstances to be speaking to you, Jim, but good morning to you. He was quite a man, Terry, wasn't he? Yeah. Legend in his own lifetime. Um, great character. Enjoyed life to the full while he could. But uh, obviously, anybody who does that, you can't expect to live life at that pace and, and live for a long time as well, you know. Tell us about um, his skills as a horseman through your eyes as a, a jockey on that great horse, best mate, Jim. You had great days together, didn't you? Yeah, unbelievable. Um, like, when I started it, Henry and I basically they'd just got married that summer. Um, and uh, obviously, um, the, it's a kind of a burgeoning yard, you know, it was growing, like, it went from kind of, my first year there, they probably had 45 horses and I ended up with a lot more than that, you know. So um, oh, there were great times and uh, it was very much a partnership. Between, you know, they used to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and feed half the yard each, you know what I mean? So it was very, very much a partnership and um, I think Hen probably did the board in the evening before regarding what work they'd do and then when it actually come to race day, it'd be Terry and I would discuss kind of tactics and the whole thing just worked well as a team, you know. And what was it about him in particular, Jim, that made the whole operation such a success, do you reckon? I think, A, he'd experience, and B, um, he was probably... Do you know what he was? He was a great fellow in the whole best mate era. There was obviously a lot of, at times, the build-up to Cheltenham, etc., there'd be a lot of tension around the place and a bit of stress every now and again, and he was a great fellow to kind of uh, break that up with a one-liner that would make everybody laugh and that kind of thing, you know what I mean? It's priceless, that sort of ability, Jim, isn't it? Yeah, and so hence they complemented each other very well, both Hen and Terry. In that respect, like, Hen was more deeper thinking, thinking long-term, and Terry was really light-hearted, and I think uh, they complemented each other very well, and as a team, obviously, uh, it worked. So he and Hen handled the horses fantastically, but, of course, he was a fabulous jump jockey as well before before you and I really knew him, Jim. Um, obviously, he predates us a little bit, but... but uh, did he ever pull you aside, Jim, with regard to your specific riding of certain horses? Uh, like, he was a great fellow for kind of roaring and shouting and that kind of thing. And, but, you know, it was, it was part of his character and we just kind of laugh at him, laugh with him, you know, the whole lot. It was, it was good fun, um, the schooling ground, etc. Um, but I think there was only once ever he really gave me a proper bollocking and that was because... I rode a horse at Sandown that we all thought would win, and he told me the ground was quite heavy, and he told me to come up to stand side, and I didn't. I stayed on the rail, and I got beat at length or something. And that was the only time I'd say that he actually had a crossword of me and really meant it, you know, which was, you know, it's one of those occasions where I deserved it. Was but he right, Jim, was he? Oh, he was right, yeah. The horse, <laughs> the horse should have won. If I followed his instructions, we would have won, you know, so it was one of those things. Um, but uh, other than that, we got on brilliantly, do you know what I mean? Um we kind of, uh, how do you say, we discussed tactics for, for a race beforehand and if the race didn't unfold as we had planned, uh, he was very understandable, you know what I mean? Mm. And, and Jim, of course, the best mate story was at the centre of so many good things during that time. He was a wonderful horse. You and his partnership was fantastic with... with with Henrietta and, and uh, Terry, you know, guiding the two of you as well, had all the ingredients of a magical story, didn't it? Yeah, it was great. Um, and, uh, like, between Hen and Terry, like, between them, basically, did an unbelievable job with best mate. Like, he went to the Cheltenham. He obviously won the Cheltenham Gold Cup three times. He was second in the Supreme Novice Hurdle, and arguably he could have won if we had a bit more luck in running. And, of course, what people forget is that he was odds-on favourite for the Arkle the year of the foot and mouth when it was cancelled. So, in theory, he would have gone to um, Cheltenham in tip-top form on five occasions, which is incredible training. Mm. Probably, Jim, looking back, you know, despite the fact it's all very sad, it's probably looking back seriously appropriate that that really top-class horse came, came Terry's way, albeit, you know, through Henrietta as well. Um, well, to be fair, they worked at getting horses, you know what I mean? Mm. They used to you'd be racing on a Saturday in England, they'd be on the next flight over to Ireland to go point to pointing on the Sunday and try and find the next superstar, and, and they did. But, it was, you know, it wasn't luck, do you know what I mean? It was uh, hard work and determination that got them there. Yeah. So if you could sum him up in the sentence, Jim, how would you do that? 
Well, as I said, somebody, I think it's written in the paper today, but as regards Terry's passing, like uh, he's really one of those characters whose life should be celebrated rather than his death mourned. You know what I mean? Because he lived it to the full and he was a great character and I think he'd love to see people go out and have a few drinks on, his, on the day of his funeral and have a good time because he, that's what he would have done, you know? Jim, thank you for those sentiments. It's really kind of you to join us this morning. Best of luck to you. Thank you, John.